HP. Thinkers are great, but doers change the world. Damn! An island nation surrounded by four seas, Great Britain has at least one major natural resource, water. So it's no surprise that the British have ambitious plans to harvest the energy of the waves that pound their shores. That means a good wave climate and, and strong tides, both of which are tremendous opportunities to generate electricity. Stephen Wyatt supervises wave and tidal technologies for the Carbon Trust, a company set up by the British government to develop renewable energy. We can get around 20% of the UK's electricity from wave and tidal, so it's a tremendous opportunity for us here in the UK and uh, we're just beginning to, to understand how we can uh, capitalise on that. Checkmate makes a variety of products, from heavy-duty cargo slings to safety harnesses for construction crews. When Checkmate was approached by two inventors with a radical idea for harnessing wave energy in 2007, CEO Paul Austin got on board. We looked at it. The more we looked at it, the more we liked it, and decided this would be worth the effort, but knowing it would be a very expensive project indeed to get off the ground or into the water. The anaconda is a giant sea snake made of rubber tubing. It's tethered to a mooring in the ocean with a turbine connected as its head. Each wave as it passes excites a bulge inside the tube. The bulge causes the tube to expand very slightly, hence we call it anaconda, a snake swallowing something. Austin says the anaconda does what many had previously considered impossible. It uses flexible materials to generate renewable energy, just as veins carry blood to the heart. You only have to put your fingers on your pulse to realise the same principles are involved in delivering power through a rubber tube. Essentially, the ocean waves force seawater through the rubber tube at increased pressure, creating a bulge wave. When the bulge wave gets to the end of the tube, the compressed water drives the turbines, which generate electricity. For the last three years, Checkmate has been running tests on scaled models of their anaconda, gradually increasing their size. We've proved that the technology works, that we can actually capture energy from the waves and make it available then to convert into electrical power. What we need to do is get it in the water, get a generator on there, a turbine on there, and actually have it generating power in the water. And that we hope to do by early next year. But getting it working in the British seas will not be easy. We're trying to engineer for some of the most hostile environments and conditions on, on the planet to both design and build a technology that can survive those harsh environments and those waves that come with all the storms. Still, the anaconda may have some significant advantages over other wave energy devices in development. One of the key attributes for, for any wave energy device is being robust. And uh, rubber is inherently a very robust material. It's also a relatively cheap material, and therefore when a wave hits it, it doesn't absorb shock loads in the same way that a rigid steel structure would. In fact, the Anaconda won a competition launched by the Carbon Trust in 2007. We were looking for, for those devices that ultimately had the best potential for commercial viability. Tests so far indicate that the Anaconda could potentially deliver huge amounts of power at a comparable price to other renewable energy technologies. One full-scale Anaconda should provide on an annualised basis enough power to provide 1,000 average homes in the UK with electricity. That's an awful lot of power for one unit. Now the US government is considering whether it could work on the west coast, as are other countries with long shorelines like Australia and South Africa. As promising as the technology may be, its market viability remains to be seen. Everyone talks a good game about renewables without necessarily understanding what it's going to take to deliver renewables. At the moment, the anaconda finds itself in the territory often called Death Valley, where a good idea is stalled in development for lack of financing. Until now, development costs have come out of Paul Austin's pocket. What we now need is the funds to take it from that technology all the way through to the commercial manufacturing of the marketplace. The company estimates it will cost around $25 million to complete the trials for a full-sized anaconda. Ideally, Austin imagines up to 100 of these giant sea snakes in the water, controlled from the shore via simple wireless technology. By using simple Bluetooth technology, the same as you would have on your phone or your computer, 
that you can set a shore station up with a computer program which will get constant feedback, literally millisecond feedback, from exactly what is happening within the Anaconda unit. And unlike wind turbines, the Anaconda is almost invisible and doesn't require any supporting structure. A lot of people aren't very keen on seeing wind turbines everywhere. So the fact is you can't see Anaconda from the shore. One massive advantage. Um, also, you don't need a big concrete plinth. You don't need all the foundations. You don't interfere with the seabed. Austin believes that eventually outside investors will get as excited as he is about the possibilities of this strange looking device. Our game plan is to be the leader in a brand new technology that nobody had ever thought about before, of using flexible engineering in harnessing the power of the ocean waves today. There may well be other ideas that come along, but at the moment, this idea to me looks as if it's the world beater. Coming up next, generating electricity from passing traffic.